Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. Try to do one interesting video a week for you. This house is 1950-ish. Uh, um, the gentleman that all I know was, the last guy that sold it was a, um, a uh, oh gosh, what do you call that? A physicist. And he was um, definitely tinkering for 50, 60 years in his house the whole time. He built this solar system. Um... This gigantic box here contains rocks and a couple radiator systems for solar heat that's collected, the collector box. And then up above through there is the solar panels. There's six of them for water. And he would come down to do his water system here. Built this duct system here that vents through the living room and um, put in some dampers and some speaker wire. And the damper on that side to bring in the hot air and add a some reverse winter and then hooked up some solenoids here through the water tank and labeled it as he went along i'm assuming the doorbell switch was a test button but then this was some reverse winter and then This is what they want me to gut out. So the system had quite a bit of stuff on the back side, which is, uh, oof, power had came in here, went to a timer, came out of the timer, started to control the winter versus the summer cooling. And then we had an exhaust fan up there that was turned on. Dormer lights up in the control panel. I've got to look at that later tomorrow. Um, so this was his idea of a bunch of contactors, controllers, and ice key relays with 110 volt. He had one little uh, relay, but I believe that's a 110 ice cube relay, but it looked like it didn't work, so he cut it off. Um, I'm going through wire to wire to cut things out. So far what i found is that this little box up here was a different temperature control. A lot of his notes said 1981. I was six years old playing GI Joes then. <laughs> so I'm trying to back lag 30, 40 years to figure out what he was doing here. But uh, in a nutshell, if you follow the schematic, it looks like power comes in to be plugged into here. This part of the control strip comes in here. This is your line. These are switch legs out that go to the panels up above for house thermostat at 110 volt. A dormer power um so basically i'm trying to diagnose things like this like this damper motor i'm only getting eight and a half volts up here and then when i finally did get it up there to get power what i did was i just simply came in here and said okay the power comes to here to this strip and he's plugging this into here and this is dead well this back fed and look there's an arc mark that's where it blew up that little water pump out the water heater and then right here, coming down, the power is here into that. So what I'm doing is I kind of made my own test lead. Turn that on. Now I've got power. A lot of you are scared to use a light bulb, but I tell you, when this guy used power as his neutral, he basically switched every neutral in here. And I can tell you right now that I think what he did wrong is he never added up all of his neutral loads. And that's why stuff was um, not working well or he was blowing it up. Because you can't, you got to make sure your neutral is not too hot. So when he added a damper, a damper, a damper, and a motor, um, I don't think this little box could handle it. And it looked like it got black and juiced. So basically, in a nutshell, this guy was controlling the different temperatures. Because another wire came down here and went right here to a Fahrenheit temperature in there. When that kicked on, that came back down. Anyway, so I'm using these two. I stabbed the outlet right here. I'm using them as my test leads. How do I know they're reversed? Because that's my hot. I put red and that over there. So it looks like he did a lot of things a little bit different. But anyway, so I'm coming up here and I'm testing. See that motor there? It's dead. He had a major fault. So... The water pump solenoid was broke for that little, um, I guess you would call that um, a zone pump for you, you guys that do boiler systems. But that one was dead. This motor is fried. 
um, and so far I'm going through each and indiv individual thing like he asked me to gut. I don't want to just start cutting wires out. I want to make sure that I'm not killing something. He had all kinds of schematic in the house, um, but as I go through this, I'll probably do a couple videos on this. But right there, I got to clean that up. Here, these light bulbs, all of this behind here, he's got stuff like this all over the house. Um, good old Romex with nails, exposed, stuff like this. I don't know what they're trying to do here to this to here. So I'll probably try to find the beginning part of the switch, put a piece of ENT flex, buy myself a 1x4 switch for a LED light and just switch that light and put a piece of flex. He just wants it cleaned up. I'm not trying to spend a ton of time, but these are the rooms that are the heaviest issues that I've been seeing. There's a little bit in the attic. And that solar water system is up above here. You can see where the amount of stress crack that beam through the years. Um, there's a lock on this. I'll have to get through that later. I'll show another video of that up there, but this is where he was doing these ducts. But from his notes, this is his whole booklet on pictures and notes. Oh, there's the solar system up there built. All that weight panels put in so he's trying to heat his air and the water i think the water did good based on what i had seen but some of the air didn't this is in that tank with all these cement blocks amazing though 40 years ago this is somebody's invention and dream and the building codes were pretty much like yeah do what you want and i'm sure they approved some of it but there's your damper uh, motors so, but anyway, so we're going through that. All the circuitry, I, went, I read through all the schematics of this. I mean, this guy was very detailed. I'm trying to, I, I, this is like a high limit, low limit in that tank. Somewhere there's this device, like a, a dryer machine. So I'm going through all these notes. And then he's got stuff just how he, you know, how the house was originally wired, but then how he did the basement. I'm not sure he understood a doorbell wire because you can't use two transformers on a doorbell. So that, he said, doesn't work, and I can see why. Three-way system notes, um, basement notes, symbols of outlets, switches, and lights notes. Most of it I understand. Um, this one I'm still wrapping my gears around. I think that's that, that box that I'm in with all the... You would think that's all low voltage. It's not. Most of it's line voltage. Nowadays, we'll low volt that stuff, but um, here's another diagram of schematic that's helpful. But he's pretty much trying to do winter versus summer, but then he has to, in the winter, he has to um, drain some of the pipes so they don't freeze in the garage. But anyways, I'm an old appliance tech, so I love schematics and drawings and figuring out wires. Um, I know a lot of you guys get all freaked out on my videos. I trace things hot. You know, sometimes I, I, I question, how could you not trace things hot? Something like this, this is all 110 volt. I already stuck my meter on it. Nothing is 240 coming in here. In fact, it's one circuit doing all of this. It's probably either the breaker was tripping, most of all, maybe not. But this little doodah says it can only handle 7.5 amps, 7.2 amps. Well, the neutral side of a lot of these dampers. I mean, here, here's a sad thing for Dayton Motor, which is American made. There's no horsepower, no RPM. I mean, whether there's 746 watts and one horsepower, at least would have helped me know if there's one or two horsepower, and then I would know it's 1,200 watts and divided out, it'd be 10 amps or five and a half amps, nothing. That's the weakest tag I've ever seen, and it hasn't faded because, look, they put 60 hertz, 120 volt in the model number, but nothing else. So how could you really know the wattage unless you did a resistance test when it was new and then you used your pi formula for... P equals I times R and R, R divided by whatever. I've got the formula in the truck. But 
So if you get into all of that, then you would know what the wattage is and the amperage. Then you'd know how much you could put on this guy. But this guy was taking the brunt of trying to do the collector versus up above the storage. And he was trying to control valves to let the water come in, go back out. But most of all, to blow hot air. Because you can see right here, this is a patch and he had a, a motor in this side. And he had to take it out at some point. So... But yeah, we're, we're going through. He got that out, which had a big belt-driven motor over there. And that was pushing hot air up and then back down. And then I think that was what was on his notes. He made it look like it was down here originally, but it, I never saw it. So he must have been trying to push it up and bent it right there. And that's just like an attic fan motor with a belt-driven, you know, with a three-horsepower motor. No, nah, that's a probably one and a half, actually. Probably 12 amps. But yeah, so as you can see, um, what an invention, man. I mean, that goes down into that tank. There's two tanks here. There's two, two containers of water, two zones. Zone one, zone two. And they would give them hot water and then go down to the basements open down below. But my question is, is why would you put all this in a garage in the first place when the garage faces north in Colorado? It's cold, especially in this town I'm in. So, anyways, this video is done March uh, 18, 2020. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well with the coronavirus by the time you see this video the world may have ended it takes me six to seven months to get them uploaded if the world hasn't ended then you'll see more of my videos but yeah this what a cool job and right now a lot of people are home because they can't work isn't that sad i feel fortunate i can have certain jobs like this and i can keep busy and trace through some guy's crazy dream 40 years ago this guy was truly a mad wire scientist Totally admire his ability to do this. But at some point, I think he just had a failure. But it looked like it was working from what I heard from for a few years. Um, but I love getting into this. This is how you really learn the field, guys. You're not going to learn this in school. And you're not going to learn this pulling new wire in homes and buildings every single day. I love the remodel side. So when he told me over the phone what this was about, I was like, yeah, I don't normally go that far out for work, but I said, I think I want to see this one. And when I sell it, I was like, yeah, I love this challenge. We'll get it cleaned up. It'll take us about a week. Um, we'll discuss pricing online as normal. But yeah, so this is what we'll be cleaning up. I'll show you another video. And then we're probably going to get a sub panel in here is what we're thinking. And get some arc fault breakers installed. Right in there. But yeah, guys, don't be afraid. Use your meter. Check you got 240. Know your line coming in. Once you do, guys, this is all this is all appliance work right here. Light bulb testing. You know, you're just coming through and seeing where your hots came in, where your hots did not come in. Because if you've got 240, you will blow up your light bulb. But you know, just checking. Oh, I do have something here. I gotta check next. You know, what does that go to? Well, that that wire comes down. Go straight out line and load. So that's how he's feeding that block. Right there. Then he fed that block. So see, he soldered all this. So literally, now that it... Whoa! You gotta be careful now. Oh, see right here? A lot of this stuff was loose too. So, sad thing? I don't even think it tripped a breaker. I doubt it. Let's try it. A lot of these old breakers will not trip easy, guys. Ah, it did. Okay, good. So then, you know what's funny about it is here's my panel. And his note said that the Circuit 4 was out there. And that was remodeled. So, <laughs> you'd think that the power would come right here and come down right now. Because this looks like it was added from his notes later as well, this sub-panel. So that explains a lot more. But from what I can see on the original panel to the panel in his notes and pictures to now the existing panel. This is the third panel in the house. So for some reason, 
he might have thought, like I had a phone call just now, hey, I got to get an upgrade for what? I got to go from 100 amp to 200 amp. Why? I got breakers tripping in the house. Right, the main breaker, sub panel breaker? Nah, just one circuit in the basement. You don't need a whole service upgrade 90% of the time if only one circuit's tripping. It's one circuit on one breaker. So, not that I wouldn't mind, you know, making some money and doing a job, but I don't want to be the guy that's on the back side of that saying, hey, oh, you need a new service when it's just a circuit issue. So, but the point is, is that's probably what happened here is he added that sub panel, but then later came and added all of this stuff. But I just want to show you how unique all of this stuff is. I mean, he built every one of these little pieces. And even, I guess my wife and I are discussing to keep the, the screen straight. Anyways, must be nice to have that kind of time on your hands, right? Thanks for joining us, guys. I'll keep you posted as we go through and uh, hopefully not try to blow everything up. But, yeah, the breaker did well. Tripped it quick. Um, but, yeah, we'll get all this gutted hopefully here by today. We'll see. Thanks.